Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Mr. Popo and we are Popo. And today we're looking at my most favorite FEOA designer and that is Jeff Christie. And yes, I changed my shirt, but that's all right. So this is Jeff Christie and I'm pretty sure that you have seen his designs before because if you haven't, then you probably missed on a really great designer because look at this. You must have seen this on Pinterest on Behance if you've been around the UI space. I've been doing some really incredible designs. Just look at the colors, just look at the balance, the, the choice of fonts. This is crazy. And these, these these emblems designing all this like this is this is crazy. What do you think, Jonas? Do, do you like uh, what you're saying? I does. like the contrast. Oh, he does. Yeah, I like the contrast. I like the blues and the reds. I think I've seen this work before. Would you uh, like this if it was CSU. in pink? Uh, probably, keeper. maybe, maybe. There Depending on what color you contrast it with. He's you a know? keeper. So look at it, this. This this was like way before Netflix. This is way before Netflix took over. This is really great. Like you could literally see all the infos. But I believe the reason that they did not put this was because it was too much for the time that he designed this. The engines were not that strong to run all this really high fidelity looking UI. But that's how good he is. Yeah, too much overhead I imagine for the programmers. Yeah. This this this, this, this was really... seven years ago. Yeah. And this really look at it it really feels powerful as of an end of round to to look at this is this is really good battlefield yeah. has a lot of learning to do i mean look at the details here i mean if you look at this particular image and we take a look at it do you see these venetian cuts here oh yeah i just noticed that it's like a texture in the yeah overlaid in the background yeah yeah and i believe the reason they do this was to actually have a contrast between the background and actually the foreground so mm -hmm. just putting it like that it, it, it's these little details that are why i really love jeff Cruz. Yeah, you can literally see what's selected and what's what's wrong. Maybe he's gonna get an AFK ban or like this. You can see the levels. You can see whoever is on, whoever is speaking. I think this is really cool. The the one thing that is that is off putting me here is just this one because you can't really see it. Yeah, it's not highlighted. It's yeah. like normally when you have prompts in games, they're supposed to be visible for players. Yeah, so can... but, but here it's very faded. And I barely know what it's like. Yeah. Select lock. Cool. As a start intro, you don't really want to reveal so much about the game and just blurring it this way is really good this for some reasons reminds me of alien isolations even if you play like the the latest gundam game the gundam evolution they have that title type of title screen as well yeah it looks like yeah. everything is trying to to look like movie nowadays yeah it's really good i'm not sure about this screen though it looks like it's a lot of a lot of things happening it's way too it reminds me of a screen that gmonk did with ashtop for battlefield a while ago and i was really it a promo piece or was it part of the game? No, a UI thing, a UI thing. And he tried okay. to do the UI menu in this way, but yeah, the team wasn't really, really happy with it because it so it happened that Tomb Raider, they did this design for going through the menus, but it was really, really annoying because I also remember when I was playing Tomb Raider, I'm a big fan of Tomb Raider, that while going through the menu, it's really annoying that I have to wait for the transition. It's like Prince of Persia, third one, where he goes with this girl and it's magic, where every single button that you press, it goes in and then you press and then it goes in. So it wasn't really the most beautiful experience that I had while playing that game. It was beautiful. It was beautiful looking at it. It was a problem when you just want to get into the game and just mm -hmm. get into the option. So just to change an option, I literally had to go, for example, three times and I have to look mm -hmm. at that transition three times. The transition was like one second or two second long. So, yeah. so Tom Brader did this and apparently it flopped. So now they avoid doing that. So I think this, this, is, this is also probably one of the reasons why they didn't go with this. It looks... It looks yeah it looks cinematic but so and that's one thing that people don't see during game dev is that some sort of ideas sometimes just stay on the studio and they never ever see light of the day this is really good this is really beautiful so yeah this is uh, jeff chrissy and the reason i and by today's standards would you say this is outdated design because i mean yeah it's been seven years right yeah because the People are no longer, I personally no longer interested into, oh, this looks super beautiful. People just want to get into the game. Not gonna mm. lie. That's why everything has become very flat. Simplified. Yeah. <laughs> it's the like the plastic design. Yeah. But I'm pretty it's like sure how in graphic design, flat art took over, remember? Yeah. You remember those flat infographics? It's like, oh my God, yeah. bias. Oh my God, puppet tool. Oh my God, do yeah. it. <laughs> no, nobody uses those. <laughs> Nope, nope. <laughs> There's that one funny Duik meme. Anymore. Yeah, if you're using Duik and the puppet tool and stuff like 
that you may want to. People moved on, man. Yeah. So, yeah, this is Jeff Christie, so it's done a lot of work. But the reason I came and I wanted to do this video is just because I want to see how he moves on reptiles, reti reticles. Where is it? Re <laughs> see, now I can't say it because of you. <laughs> it's reticle, not reptile. Oh. A reticle. Ah. You know, a... Reticule. Yeah, okay, ah. that works too. It's so radical of you to help me be. In Stop this. ridiculing me, okay? Did you guys, did you guys get the joke? I mean, no, everybody unsubbed already. No, everybody... they're gone. <laughs> They're gone. So this is what he did for the reticle. So the shapes are, I would say, I would say personally, they're very basic. If you've seen a lot, if you've been creating hunts and if you are for a long time, it's pretty basic, straightforward. You can already tell which one goes for what. So I would say this is a normal gun, normal gun. This would go for something like a shotgun because it has a long range. Same thing with this one. I would say this, this could actually even be a missile. It looks like more of an airplane, something like a missile that needs direction to lock in to this a certain horizon line and stuff like that so more radical center depending on what kind of gun and situations this is pretty all right this looks like an alien something that is very very advanced that's very cool yeah this one this one i think we're gonna get to it with the animations i hope it's animated down there but if he does the animation it would be really good because i do remember that this went really viral on reddit and twitter people are speaking about how beautiful the animation of this was so hopefully he has animations down oh he does so one of the reasons why I like Jeff Christian, and I need to mention it, there, I believe there are two school of thoughts when it comes to motion design. There's one, which I call the Ashtorp and David Carlson or something like that, where everything needs to have a meaning before you animate. You need to have an understanding of what you're doing and not just do it just because it looks good. It needs to have a meaning of why it moves there and why it's moving like that. But that's not me. I'm part of the second school of motion design, which is, does it feel good? Does your gut feeling like it just go with it to me it doesn't really have to have a meaning all the time it's not that i don't have meaning most of the time but it's just that not all the time it just if it feels good i go with it and that's how i go with hud animation sometimes i look at what do i need first is there a main thing i take care of it and then everything there is around the reticle everything there is around the hud I'll just go with the flow of how I wanna, how I fancy animating it basically. But I don't think that that's what Jeff Christie does. Jeff Christie is part of like Ashtar David kind of school of thoughts, which is it needs to have a meaning to everything, especially in game dev. So one thing that I need to mention as well while looking at this and why I really highly, highly appreciate Jeff Christie as a, as a, as a reference is because in game dev, there is a problem where you only have so much time to do with each animation, especially when it comes to UI animation, because you have to think about it that everything could be spam most of the things in game devs are spammable so when it comes to radical <laughs> when it comes to radicals it's most of the time will be changing a lot most of the time because at any object they need to focus on they will change so you only have the small amount of time so sometimes it's 10 sometimes it's 5 but you don't have more than that because anything more than 10 it's gonna be so long to animate in so long to animate out so you just need it to be snappy enough not too snappy just at the right. What do the Swedish guy say? Logom or something like that. Logom. Logom. <laughs> do you have to open your mouth like logom when you say it or just like logom? No, no, no. Logom. Just logom. You don't have to like, you know, open your mouth like that. Like <laughs> one of those YouTuber guys. Dude, cool. You're changing already. <laughs> you're becoming one of them. So, <laughs> so as you can see here, it's, it's some elements are smooth and some elements are snappy. And I think you mentioned that before when we were looking at Jeff Chris's animations is that mm. I think you mentioned mentioned somewhere that you like how the main things are snappy but the ones yeah. that could get some smooth animations they are well smoothly animated just enough yeah, yeah and there is a good. tiny delay like you know on the tinier elements yeah so if you can notice even on this image and i imagine you'll see it for the rest which is like the primary shapes are very snappy yeah. but the smaller shapes yeah are delayed they, they ease in yeah. or like they i guess they ease out you know that's the so here are the primary shapes it's basically these these focus angles here so as you can see yeah. here they they they, they just get snappy but everything else they just ease in into this and there is one thing actually i want to mention so when you're starting motion design i think we all went through this we all all of us went through this we still have this on our backyards so to say is when you want to transition from one state to another what you would think of is everything every single shape needs to move from one state to another but that's yeah. not yeah but that's the mistake that you make when you're starting on fui animation and motion design 
zombies in general is that not everything needs to transition to the next scene you can just make things disappear and then bring in the new things they just should probably come from the same source but you don't have to transition that shape specifically so why i'm mentioning this if you look at these little lines here in the center they don't really transition if you pay attention to them and you slow this uh, this gif 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 graphics gif so when you look at them they just leave and then they come in and same thing comes in with the with the with these center things so the idea here was it was supposed to transition to this but just because of the motion the follow-up motion he doesn't need to transition the shape he just fade in fade out fade in fade out both both shapes and that's it you don't really transition everything and he wins. To my eyes, it looks like those two middle lines are becoming the lines on the sides, right? Yeah, but he didn't. But yeah. but that's not the case. Yeah. You know? I imagine the reality is it's probably like just a trim path and it's like not even connected, you know, two different paths that are not. True. Yeah. And that and that's part of the follow-up animation. It's yeah. it just continues on the speed and motion of the previous layer. And that's one thing exactly. that well, what's their name? It's not Odd Fellows, the studio that I really like a lot. They are very Ordinary creative folks? in their infographic. Is the ordinary folks oh, yeah ordinary folks yeah that's oh, okay. that's something that they use all the time is follow-up animations yeah. like they just transition the camera and switch the scene and yeah match cuts scene, yeah match cuts yeah. basically yeah. i love match cuts and one thing that is that i really need to mention is how beautiful this is we've been talking for the past few minutes just on the same page and i personally <laughs> did not feel bored of looking at this red yeah one. like that's we're still on the first one yeah and and that's one thing that i love about jeff chris is that he's you are animations you don't get bored of them you could you could keep on looking at them for a long time which one of the ingredients for game ui design is you should not be bored because people are gonna play it for years and months so yeah everything else is uh, yeah there it goes the legendary the legendary heat wave animation look at this so the main shapes they snap to that position but these are harmoniously uh, did i get that right harmoniously yeah yeah, yeah you're yeah, on the right track yeah, yeah i'm learning english so harmoniously nice. <laughs> I've been reading books, man. <laughs> I've been, I've been, I've been memorizing that Oxford Dictionary, man. I, I want yeah. my UK citizenship. So, <laughs> so, so, yeah. You can see that these because they they're not gonna move so far. So he has the time while the others are trying to snap. He has the time to actually move them and offset them way better. Same thing with this. I like the idea that he just brought this in the middle instead of just bringing it outside. It's just it just it just means a lot more. Yeah, and then it's it's. Charged, so everything is beautiful the fact that he cut this this is just great yeah and he can just permit himself from bringing one shape to another side and intertwining between them Th that's the thing it's like he he doesn't he doesn't fear intertwining objects like laying an object on top of another personally i don't think i've ever done that in my entire career where one shape was supposed to be inside another shape i don't like to to bring them together like i can't have them o overlap. on top of another yeah i don't like to overlap yeah. shapes if something is in the center it always has to stay in the center unless this one disappears but he doesn't do that. It is actually feels like overheating. The more you click, the more you click, yeah. the more it goes like this. The, the more you can feel the recoil in the yeah. animation. Yeah. I really like this. So yeah, I believe that every everything else. So again, coming back to our first point, which is everything else has has a purpose. So every single design that he's done here will be carried over to every single gun, which is one of the good things about the, the first school of thought of motion design, which is everything needs to have a meaning and a reason. So mm. each gun will be basically use the same principles and you would understand them regardless of what gun you are you don't need to relearn the gun just because the animations that were used on the first gun that you had will be just carried over to the second gun and that's the beauty of having this it's Something like a like unified that. unified language you know between them yeah you know like if i didn't know anything about this game i would say oh yeah like this these guns are made by the same manufacturer they're used by the same faction or some, exactly. something like that yeah everything just really follows that i like how these these little steps here change up and down as as he fires it just goes up and down it's pretty beautiful this is for an alien like needler yeah an alien like gun oh needler that's a halo yeah yeah halo gun We'll probably look at, at more in the future but hey that's me and Eunice trying to look at some references because we are working on a radical hard animation projects which we're going to be sure with you guys soon and uh, hope you like this uh, me and uh, Eunice rumbling and trying to learn from other designers and uh, especially respectable designers like Jeff Christie it's really good when you mix designers and your own spice and then you have something new so you can be recognized and also your portfolio gets respected during uh, screenings and job interviews 
Williams. My name is Mr. Popo, and that was Jonas. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having me. It's thank been fun. You. And thank you for tuning in to this first installment of How Designers React. I'm hoping that this turns into something more reoccurring between tutorials. And uh, if you liked it, hit the like button. And uh, if you have any feedback, please let me know in the comment below, as well as if you have any suggestions. My name is Mr. Popo, and I'll catch you on the next one.